Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark, that's for art. I want to thank you for uh, joining my channel. Uh, like this video title said, that 311 was the beginning of normalizing radioactivity. Uh, I think it was almost like a gift to the nuclear industry. And I'm actually beginning to think that those people who thought Fukushima was intentionally done, maybe they were right. Because here we are eight years later, and the quote, anti-nuke activist community is at each other's throats. Nobody gets along. Nobody really, uh, there's factions within it. Uh, the establishment anti-nukers hate the YouTubers because the YouTubers say stuff without having it verified, but it's obvious common sense, right? And then some YouTubers exaggerate and some YouTubers are just angry and piss and vinegar all the time because they can't get over how abominably horrible the nuclear industry has been. I personally think that all of the technologists, as John Goffman pointed out over and over again in his books, uh, they're all monsters, including doctors, scientists. Um, they're all in it for money. We are literally killing our planet for money. There is... We need to shut down the nuclear industry and put billions of dollars into it. I know that's a paradox, but we have to put billions of dollars into the nuclear industry in order to figure out what to do with all the nuclear waste. And while we're at it, let's do that with the chemical and uh, the whole chemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry and these industries that have got developed at the beginning of the last century that so-called help make our lives simple which are actually just killing us, literally killing us. Today is 3-11-2019, and since I found out in 2013, I have been making an event every year, protesting on the streets, saying Fukushima is still here. I, at this point, am fully convinced everybody knows that Fukushima is still a major issue. I don't talk to anybody when I ask them, God, you're still eating fish? They're like, yeah, but what are we going to do? So people have just given up and are allowing themselves to be contaminated. I personally am resisting that. Like I've changed my own eating habits. I've changed a lot of things because I don't want to die some hideous death, frankly. You know, I mean, I don't know what speaks more to this. This last week we saw CNN put out a fake news report about how Fukushima, the ice wall is working. Thank God for, for for TEPCO. That was the whole gist of the article because they're competent scientists and they've developed this ice wall, which is a big fat lie. And they also said that there was only 23 nuclear bombs dropped on the Bikini Islands. Now this came straight out of CNN. So I couldn't figure out where they get this 23 number because I thought it was like over 60. Turns out it was 67. You know where they got it from? From Wikipedia. So CNN uses Wikipedia as their reference source. That's the kind of freaking crazy world we live in. This week, the Japanese superstar, their uh, swim meet person, has come down with leukemia. And, oh, she's going to fight through it because she wants to be in the Olympics. These people are off their freaking rockers. That's the issue here. They are completely off their rockers. Luke Perry died of a stroke. God knows why. If I was his family, I'd be getting a heavy metal testing on his blood. Because there was the Santa Susana fires last year. And you know what? All that nuclear contamination spread all over Los Angeles. And I would venture to say that the radioactive rates, the cancer rates, the stroke rates, diabetes rates, schizophrenia, autoimmune diseases, they're off the charts now out there. They were off the charts in Simi Valley before. Now they're off the charts, I bet. I bet you can see a steady slope. Now this is, in particular, the point of why I didn't go protest, why I didn't say anything, why I didn't create flyers, why I didn't try to go rabble-rouse, why I didn't call Kevin Finnegan and say, hey, let's go protest. Did Kevin Finnegan call me? No. Is he protesting? I hope so, for his sake. He's a youth. He ought to be out there protesting. But the reason I didn't is because it is so normalized. People are just accepting the fact that their children are getting cancer. We're going to get cancer. Oh, we're all going to. Truth is, we are in an extermination event. 
And honestly, I don't think even if we stopped everything today that we could actually stop everything. That we're, we're already off the cliff. So that leads me to the second part of this. And I've come to the conclusion and the decision that I'm going to stop making my radio shows. Um, wow, that was weird. The audio, the, the video thing kind of got weird. That was kind of strange. Um, well, let me go back to this because this is my second decision. This is like a big decision. You know, I've been doing my YouTube channel since 2013, really. Uh, I started reading Jonathan Goffman's books. I thought if people knew the level of danger that radioactive contamination, and since i am learned about that, I've also learned that chemical contamination is just as dangerous. So I sort of mix them up because you need chemicals to make the nuclear. And we are so far in over our heads on the nuclear danger. We're like beyond over our heads. There is like no higher level than we could get with nuclear contamination. We are seeing children affected. We are seeing people die of strokes and heart attacks and leukemias. It is not going to happen. It is happening. And I actually firmly believe a lot of this, all these events that have happened, the increase in cancer comes directly from the 50s and 60s, from the bombing then, because we know it takes three generations. So we're now in our third generation of having been severely bombed. Now, we'll our species last another three generations to see what happens really from Fukushima? We don't know. But we do know that Japan is not tracking levels of radioactive contamination. They're not testing people for the blood levels in their blood. We know that they are not reporting the mutated deaths and the births and the spontaneous abortions. We know that women are intentionally not getting pregnant in Japan. Their birth rates are actually declining and going backwards. We know that they're moving people back into Fukushima so that they can have their goddamn Olympics. They think, honestly, we are going to start seeing Olympic athletes having heart attacks, having strokes, getting leukemia, getting cancer, getting thyroid cancer, getting weird autoimmune deficiency diseases. Schizophrenia is going to happen. Read Poisoned Power by Dr. John Goffman. He talks about what him, Linus Pauling, and Arthur Tamplin studied, and they discovered those five things, four or five things, are what they see every time people are exposed to radioactive contamination. And we're talking low-level radioactive contamination. So again, I'm speaking to the choir here. So this has been my big decision. I am going to not do my radio show now for at least a year until 3.11 next year. I will be doing my YouTube videos. Uh, I think that I will probably be mirroring Libby Halevi's show and Dave's show on my, on, on my Spreaker channel because I've paid for it. I might as well use it. Um, but I just can't keep interviewing activists or people who call themselves activists, right? who really are in engaging with the courts and talking about just the the bullshit, to be honest. Like, all they do is talk about the double talk. You know, people repeating, like, fighting the liars who lie us, the people who are paid to lie to us directly to our face, and then them saying, well, we filed this injunction, and we're doing this, and we're doing that. Well, look what happened to Santa Susana Field Lab. They burnt their entire bit of evidence went up in smoke. That's where the fires started. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Hold on. So I just decided I'm, I, I started the radio show to support Kevin Blanche. Kevin Blanche and I got into a row, like serious, that he did not apologize for the week before the show happened. Two days, a day before the show. I guess it was two days before. So from the time that the Age of Fission went on, I've been independent. And pretty much the anti-nukers on YouTube tell me to fuck off anyways because I'm kind of the negotiating type. I don't believe in off with their heads. So I'm like, I'm ostracized by the establishment people and I'm ostracized by the YouTube community. So what's the fucking point, right? There's I have 400 subscribers on YouTube that I am going to continue to making YouTube videos. I had thought that we could combine our forces with these with the radio show 
and actually put it out on the air. Get people to hear these, the gravity of the situation, that people would actually take action. Do you know, people just kind of roll their heads and protect themselves as if they're going into a cocoon, as if they're going to come out a butterfly if they just ignore it all. It's just beyond comprehension to me, uh, the mass response to radioactive contamination. I personally had no idea my whole entire life up until five years ago. So I don't comprehend why the organizations that are big, that can fight it, like 350.org, uh, Natural Resource Defense Fund, they're all pro-nukers. They all take money from the nuke industry. So that's why they're not talking about it. And then the organizations like Ham for Challenge or Beyond Nuclear, right? They get they don't get money from the nuclear industry. They're firmly anti-nukers, but they're fucking timid. And I unfortunately I think I offended Carl Grossman because I called Kevin Camps like weak need and timid right on the radio. I said it right to his face and he got I think it offended him because he, they, people feel like Kevin Camps is doing a great job of letting people know. I think Kevin Camps ought to be organizing people in the street. We ought to be having flyers, thousands and thousands of people out in the street against this. That was my idea in the beginning. So it was Kevin's idea. The idea behind the Post Ignorance Project is we would set up little things. It never worked. Partly... At first, when it really failed at first, when I first parted ways with Kevin, I'm like, well, it was because of Kevin's personality. He did run into a lot of people and rub them along the way, wrong way. But you know what I've come to decide about that? None of that fucking matters. It doesn't matter. It, if he would have been sweet as snow, nobody would have showed up anyways. Because they don't want to show up because it means they have to change their life. It means we have to challenge the system, the whole entire big picture of the system. So I'm going to take a hiatus on the Age of Fission radio show for one year. And I'm going to do a, a video. I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to come back in a year from now. I'm going to continue to make my videos on YouTube because I feel a lot freer on YouTube than I do anywhere else. Although YouTube now, you know, they're so, it's so, be, it's actually beyond censorship because you know they're censoring you, right? Like, how many people are going to see this video? Could this video ever go viral? Probably never. Because <laughs> YouTube will just never allow it. They just don't let these types of videos go big. I saw a YouTube video this morning. I looked up to see who's doing Fukushima videos today. I saw this girl who was doing a tour throughout Fukushima, an American woman who obviously is being paid by YouTube. And there was like, I don't know, 30,000 views of her going to Fukushima prefecture and eating their food and eating their rice and drinking their sake. And I'm like, what? I literally did make a comment. But the thing is, this is the reason I didn't do a protest. Because people want to go to Japan. They want to pretend that everything's fine, that the forests there are beautiful. Yes, they are. Just like if you go to Utah. Utah's freaking awesome. It's beautiful. Radioactive now, but beautiful. Same thing with Nevada. Same thing with the Columbia Gorge. Go up to the Columbia Gorge. You have never seen a more magnificent. Now, isn't this interesting how the industrial military complex has literally perpetrated the most grotesque harm to our planet in the most magnificent places on our planet? Hmm. Is that an accident? I don't know. I'm, I'm over it. I'm going to make my YouTube videos. I'm not going to be interviewing a bunch of activists and talking about what they're doing because it has been eight years. It's been 50, 60 years. None of it has fucking mattered. We have just been railroaded and run over back and forth like that. They are snuffing us out as we speak. And you know what I want to do? I want to do what I want to do. I'm going to make YouTube videos. I'll report on some news. I'll report on commentary. I've had people say, well, you should stick to nuclear. Fuck you. I don't have to stick to jack shit. Because I'm going to start making commentaries about politics and about women and about children and about food and about everything. Because why not? Who gives a crap? 
There's a lot of freedom in knowing that we're all like on a terminal end here. Your bucket list, you start writing your bucket list pretty quick. So part of that bucket list for me was I'm done with the age of vision for at least a year. I'm sick of being ridiculed on both sides of the industry. And I am sick of people calling me names. I am sick of whoever the fuck that guy was with Jeff Palco who's decided he's going to haunt us. That little scheme from the nuclear industry to dethrone everybody that was on YouTube making an impact. You know, I'm just sick of the whole malicious meanness of the fucking nuclear industry. I'm taking my radio show, putting it to the side. When I make YouTube videos, it may or may not be about nuclear. I may or may not grow this channel, but you know what? Like, at least I'm being authentic. I'm not going to go and protest because it's 311 and, oh, I have to. No, I don't have to. Right? What I have to do is live an authentic life and love people and forgive people quickly who have harmed me. So that's the process. I want to thank all of my subscribers who follow me, who have followed me through the many years. You know who you are, TJ, Washington. Oh my gosh, so many names. Uh, Stacy, I don't remember your last name. I remember Stacy. You know, you know who you are. I really appreciate you and I appreciate you sticking with me and watching my video rants and I'm going to actually get back to my YouTube videos a lot more because I'm just not going to do the radio show anymore. I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse and I just can't. I'm going to take at least a one year hiatus from 3-11-2019 to 3-11-2020 and reassess. So... If anybody wants to use my radio time, I've got it paid for, so just contact me. You can contact me at nutsforart at gmail. Put your courage feet on you guys. Ciao.